Today we're going to learn how to print strings and get keyboard input using BIOS routines. With these goals in mind, we'll learn a very simple approach to the use of variables in assembly. In the last video we've seen how to print the alphabet, and as an exercise you printed the alphabet in alternated caps. As a result, you now know how to use loops to print a series of characters. That's pretty much how you print strings. You surely know that the characters of a string are memorized in contiguous cells. The idea is, and you might have done it in C already, you have a pointer to the beginning of the string, you print one character, you increment a pointer, then you print again, then increment a pointer, and so on. The thing is, with the alphabet, we knew when to stop, because of a crucial property of the alphabet. No character is repeated, and the last character is predetermined. How can we possibly know when to stop with other kinds of strings? You might know that strings are null-terminated or zero-terminated. That means that at the end of every string appears a null character, represented by the number zero. We can just use that null character to check if we are done printing the string. The other big question is, how do we memorize the string? Well, you know that when we load our program, the binary image of the file is loaded to memory. You have surely heard the phrase, data and code are the same thing, which is one of the foundations of what's known as the von Neumann architecture. What that sentence means is that we store data in the very same way that we store code, as code is just data that happens to be executable. To keep things clean, we usually separate code and data by putting them in different segments of the memory. We'll talk a bit about segmentation soon, but for now we are just putting it all together. As you know from the first lesson, every instruction is translated into binary code by our compiler. There is one pseudo-instruction that allows us to write to the binary file directly, the db pseudo-instruction. db can be used to set a single byte of our binary code this way, or more than one byte, using commas. Since ASCII characters are one byte long, we can also define characters this way. Also, we can define sequences of characters by using the string syntax. And we can mix the two. Let's use db to define a string and print it. In order to know what memory cell will contain the beginning of our string, we need to assign it a name. We can do so by adding a label just before defining our string. Then we can define our string, making sure to add the null character at the end. To print the first character, we need to initialize teletype mode, as usual. Now, we need to move the first character into AL. Variable name is effectively a pointer to the beginning of the string, so in order to access the first character, we just need to dereference the pointer. This can be done using square brackets. This should print the first character of our string, but this is not a B, is it? Well, turns out that memory addresses are not counted from zero, but are offset by the hexadecimal number 7C00. Why this number? I'm not sure. To compensate for the offset, we could add hex 7C00 to our pointer, but an equivalent way is to set the origin of our memory addressing by using this command. As you can see, the character B has been printed correctly. From now on, if you apply the very same idea we used to print the alphabet, as you can try to do right now by pausing the video, your result shouldn't be much different from this one. What I'm doing here is I'm simply incrementing the pointer, stored in BX, and printing single characters until the pointer reaches the null character. Printing a character from the keyboard is not much harder, as there is another BIOS function with that very purpose. What you need to do is to set AH to 0 and trigger interrupt hex 16. As an output, you get your character in AL and a BIOS scan code in AH. If we want to save a single character to memory, we can define a new byte-long variable initialized with zero. Then we can set its value to the value of AL. As you can see, we can still use square brackets to the reference the pointer, and the move instruction to set the value of a memory cell. If we wanted to memorize a whole string, we could use a buffer. We could implement it by just defining an empty string of whatever size we like, and write the characters in a memory cell pointed by, say, BX. To do so, we want to set bx to our label, which makes it a pointer to the beginning of our buffer, and then we want to move al to the buffer, so we dereference the pointer and increment it. We can do this in a loop and make sure not to exceed the size of the buffer. If you want, you can try to write a procedure that memorizes an input string 
and print it back. And if you like, you can share your solution in the comments. In the next episode, we're going to talk about the stack, functions and something called segmentation.